Before I came out, I was a supporter in the mid-80s of um, a group um, called the um, um, Human, Human Rights Coalition that was trying to pass a basic law to say people shouldn't be discriminated against mm -hmm. in jobs, housing, and, and public accommodations just because of their sexual orientation. And what I saw during that period were a couple of things. Homophobia was being used to divide people. Um, and that here was a group of folks who were clearly oppressed and legally oppressed. And to me, that wasn't right. So it kind of coincided this, I, I came out um, in the mid 80s and as we got towards the 90s, City Hall kept telling people, well, you gotta keep educating, gotta keep educating. Well, I know you can say that about any issue. You can educate till you are dead. At a certain point, you gotta call the question. So we started the fairness campaign as a way to build a broad-based community-wide effort that would bring in all kinds of folks and that very importantly would be connected with the struggle for racial justice. Mm -hmm. That's where I came out of. And so to me, it was never gonna be about <laughs> I am going to leave my sisters and brothers in the civil rights movement and now do this other thing. It's like, how do we do this in a way that brings it all together? So the Fairness Campaign mission, for instance, says that dismantling racism is a, has to be at the core of our work. So for me, it connected. It was like, okay, we're gonna battle for um, e equity based on sexual orientation and later also gender identity, but we're going to connect it with struggles for racial justice and for economic justice and for uh, uh, women's rights and that kind of thing. And we started br building this broad coalition. I remember in one of our early meetings, uh, you know, I said, we want this to be something that people will be talking at the water fountain about, well, what do you think about this, you know, push? And, um, and so who we went to initially were some of the folks that I had relations, relationships with because of the civil rights movement work. People like Paul Bather and Rhonda Richardson and um, uh, Reginald Meeks and some of those folks. Um, <coughs> Sherry Bryant Hamilton, well she wasn't an alderman but she was an aide and she was very helpful. Um, but anyway, some of, the, some of the people, and yes, and some of the white liberals on the, on the council too. But there was a certain point in fairness where the strongest supporters, it was back in the day of the board of aldermen and there were 12 people. Our supporters were the six African American members of that board. And it's like that and people and people like Maddie Jones and others said, you know, we've been through the Civil War. We know what hate is. This is about hate. Does that mean there was no homophobia in the black community? Of course there was. There was homophobia in the white community. Very profound. That was about homophobia. Mm -hmm. That wasn't about being black or white. But, um, you know, and there were certain people like you who were critical in terms of writing um, columns and being able to put it out there. What was this about, you know, and that this was about an issue of equal rights um, it was critical. You know, the, the, we did work with the press, we did work with the unions, with small businesses, with civic organizations. We decided we needed to build people power, basically, and that we were not going to assume that there was anyone we couldn't win over. And that's how we approached things. And so we built a very broad-based movement and we would go to every single city hall meeting. They had to look at us, every city hall meeting. And, we, and in order to get our volunteers there, we had to make it interesting. So we would do things like religious leaders for fairness night. So people would bring little signs that said, another Catholic for fairness, another Jewish father for fairness. You know, we would do it like that. Um, we would have Youth for Fairness Night, or we would have, um, you know, a Parents for Fairness Night. And so people would come and we would have signs that lifted up different themes. And so the members of the board... So no matter they, what they were talking no about, matter, they'd see these signs. It was there, it was there. And I remember, I remember we said, you know, we're not going to decide one day that we don't deserve equality. We're going to keep pushing. So the only way you can get rid of us is if you eventually pass this. And we lost the vote over and over again. And people would say, how come you're going back for a vote you know you're going to lose? We said, because every loss is only a loss along the way to winning. 
because what it does is it made those politicians have to put themselves on the line, one side or another, one side or another, and it, it grew the community stronger. Every time we lost, we had new people step up and say, I feel bad, I've been on the sidelines, I want to help. And we knew that it would just keep growing like that. And, and those organizing skills were yeah. the same yes. ones that you <laughs> that used in, in the rights. other issues. And, you know, we're in a battle right now for, to pass uh, fairness statewide. A lot of people don't know that in many places around the state, someone can come into work one day and find that their desk has been cleared or their, um, you know, uh, closed closet has been cleared, that they are, they're fired just because of who they are. And